This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, let's carry on with Chapter 2. And before we look at the nice presentation of the Statement of Financial Position and Income Statement, I need to say a few more words about a term we used at the end of the last example, which was withdrawals, or the other word that means the same thing, drawings. Because if you, can, if you remember in um, item K of the previous example, the owner took 1200 from the business, uh, and we call that withdrawals. Well, I need to say slightly more because the full definition of withdrawals, let me write it and then I'll stress the relevant bits afterwards. Withdrawals is anything taken from the business by the owner whatever he or she calls it. Now, let me explain what I mean, because there are two bits uh, there. First of all, when I say anything taken from the business, it is anything. You see, usually the owner will take cash, as in our example. Uh, but it could be that the owner takes goods. If we are, uh, for instance, uh, a shop selling CDs, the owner might decide to take some of the CDs home for himself or for herself. Well, anything the owner takes is called drawings, whether it's cash or whether it's goods. So that's one bit. The other bit, whatever he or she calls it, and the point is here that I've already said the owner is most likely to take uh, cash. And what very often happens is that the as sole trader, the, the, the owner is actually working in the business and perhaps takes out ooh, $100 a week, effectively as wages. And the owner might call it wages and say, I'm taking wages of $100. However, even if the owner does call it wages, when we come to do the accounting, it is drawings. Anything the owner takes is drawings, and it reduces the amount owed to the owner. If he pays somebody else to work for him, then fine, that is wages, and it's an expense of the business. But if ever there's anything going to the owner, it's drawings, whatever it's called. And occasionally... Uh, the examiner tries to trick you and says things like, the owner took $100 a month wages. Well, irrelevant. If it's the owner who took it, then withdrawals or drawings. Anyway, let's go back to the notes. Um, in the example in the last section, we effectively produced a statement of financial position and an income statement. Um, however, if you turn to page 9, let's have a look at the, the proper, the pretty layout of, first of all, a statement of financial position. Um, so, here's what you've got on page 9. And it's just what you might call a pro forma. Um, it, it, it's only an example. Other things could appear. Other things will appear in later chapters, but this is just the, the basic layout. Well, the statement of financial position is effectively just what we had earlier, a list of what the business owns, the assets, and a list of what the business owes, the amount owed to the owner, and the amount owed to other people. But if we run down it, first of all, the assets, just like ours, we have a list of assets, but we split the assets under two headings. You'll see one heading is non-current assets, the other heading is current assets. Um, and the split between the two, non-current assets are assets that we intend to keep there's no strict rule about the timing but usually for more than one year. 
whereas current assets are assets that you expect to keep for less than a year. Now if we look at the items under it, and again these are only examples, land and buildings. Obviously, you might not keep them forever. I mean, there'll come a time perhaps when you sell your building and move to a new building. But it's not something you expect to change regularly. You'd normally expect to keep, certainly for more than a year. It's a non-current asset. Uh, plant and equipment. Plant is a rather old-fashioned word for big machines, but plant, equipment, machines. doesn't matter what words you use. But again, normally you would clearly expect to keep your machines for more than a year. Fixtures and fittings. Effectively, that's furniture, shelves, desks, etc. Uh, motor vehicles, your cars, your trucks. They're all items you'd expect to keep for more than a year. Uh, they go under the heading non-current assets. Under current assets, these are items that keep changing. So, inventories, for instance. Clearly, you'll buy goods for resale, but certainly you don't intend to keep them that long. You're hoping to sell them. Um, the amount of your inventory will keep changing as you buy more and as you sell. Similarly, accounts receivable or receivables. People owe you money, they pay you, you sell more goods. Uh, again, the balance keeps changing. <coughs> you would normally expect clearly to be paid within the year. Uh, cash. I'll come back to prepayments, but cash. Not in one sense you want to keep it, but the balance keeps changing. You're using your cash to buy goods. As you sell them, you get more cash back. Uh, the other one, which is something we will come back to in a later chapter, but prepayments. All a prepayment is, it's for various reasons you may have paid in advance. For instance, your car insurance. Usually with car insurance um, you'll have to pay at the beginning of the year for the whole year. And so at the time you pay it effectively you've overpaid. As we go through the year you're using up the insurance but until we get to the end of the year you have effectively overpaid and if you were to stop business in theory the insurance company would have to pay the money back in theory, they owe you money. Now, they're not going to pay us back because we're not going to close down. Uh, and so, although in a sense it's a receivable, we keep it separate. A prepayment, effectively a payment in advance. It comes under the heading current assets. But as I've said, we'll come back later, in a later chapter, um, to talk about that in more detail. However, there are the assets. One other thing about layout, which, I don't know, confuses quite a lot of people. The total assets are 229,000. Um, and here are the assets, land and buildings 100, 50, 20, 30, and so on. If you add them up, there are 229. But just for pure neatness, see what we've done. We've used two columns. In this column, we've listed the non-current assets and then just put the total of them here. So that 200,000 is the total of those four. Similarly, the current assets, we've listed them in this column. The total of them is 29,000 and is there. And it just looks very neat because we need the total assets, which are 229,000, we can immediately see how that splits between current and non-current. And if we want to know the makeup of the non-current or the current, we can look back to the column at the side. So it's something you'll see quite often. Uh, if you're used to presenting it differently, no problem. Uh, but I've shown it here because you will see in quite a lot of examples it presented in the same sort of way. However, right, those are the total assets. It must equal the amount the business owes. And the amount the business owes, again, if you think back to our example, we had capital owed to the owner, 
and we had liabilities owed to other people. Well, capital, exactly as we had. Remember, this is a sole trader, incidentally. But the capital, there's what we started with, in this example, 130,000. It'll go up because of the profit we've made. It'll reduce um, by any withdrawals, anything the owner's taken out, which leaves us with 170. So that's the capital. Uh, we've also managed the liabilities, but as you'll see, we actually split it between two headings. Non-current liabilities is where the there's money owing, but it's payable in more than a year. And current liabilities, where, again, we owe money, but it's payable in less than a year. Now, payable in more than a year, the only example you're likely to see, to be honest, is something like this. Um, an 8% loan, 8% is the rate of interest, but a loan, uh, we'd normally assume that it's a long-term loan, that perhaps it's repayable in five years, in which case a non-current liability. If it was payable within 12 months, it would be under the other heading, current liabilities. Or in fact, it could be both. There could be a loan where perhaps you're having to repay 5000 a year. And so the amount repayable this year would be a current liability. The rest of it, more than a year, would be non-current. Under current liabilities, well, if I start from the bottom, uh, a bank overdraft. No problem. A bank overdraft, a negative balance at the bank, is always a current liability. Because even if you did intend to keep the overdraft for a long time, in law, the bank could always demand it back immediately. Accounts payable is your payables. As in our example, the amount owing for your goods, etc. And of course, in any normal situation, you would expect to have to pay it within the year. Uh, finally, accruals. Now, accruals is something, again, we'll come back to in a later chapter. Uh, but accruals is where you do owe money for an expense, but where perhaps you haven't received the bill. For instance, in the UK, uh, people get telephone bills every three months. Well, if I were to ask today how much do I owe for telephone? Well, if the last bill was a month ago, then of course I owe for this last month. Even though they've not yet sent me a bill, I won't receive the bill for another two months. But I owe the money whether they've sent me the bill or they haven't. Well, in that sort of situation where you owe money, but you haven't yet had the bill, then we call it an accrual. It's where you're owing, but not yet received the bill or the invoice. However, we will come back um, in a later chapter to discuss it in more detail and well, exercises we'll need relating to it. However, there's the statement of financial position. It's very much the same as what we did earlier, but do remember those headings. Assets split into non-current and current assets. Liabilities, non-current and current. OK, well, if you turn over, you'll see the next page summarises terminology. Now, we've already been through those, but read through them again yourself. But look at the income statement. Now here, look carefully, because one bit of this does upset a few people. But the income statement, if you remember, is checking on the profit we've made. Ours is a very simple one. But in any income statement, the main, the, the, the place initially you're making profit, obviously, is the difference between what you pay for goods and what you sell them for. And so here we've got sales revenue of 180, 
That's our total sales, or the other word for it is turnover. And to work out how much profit we made, we deduct the cost of sales, which here is 110. And that gives us a profit so far of 70,000. And we mentioned before we call that the gross profit. Now the one bit that does confuse a few people, and again don't worry because we will come back to it later, but how are we going to work out the 110,000? You know, in our example we did each transaction separately, and in practice you can't keep doing this statement every two minutes, you do it at the end of the year. And to work out the cost of what we sold, we start with what did we have in our warehouse at the start of the year? And we call that the opening inventory. So that's what we had at the start of the year. So on the first day of the year we had goods, we already had goods worth 30,000 in our warehouse. We then say, well, what did we buy during the year? And maybe during the year we bought more goods for 120. So in total, we've now got goods in our warehouse worth 150,000. However, of course, we may not have sold them all, because at the end of the year, some of those goods will still be left in the warehouse. And any that are still left we call the closing inventory. Well, that's the inventory at the end of the year. And so if we did have 150,000, but there's 40,000 still left, surely the difference of 110 must be the cost of what was actually sold. Again, we sold it for 180, so the profit is 70. Well, that's the gross profit. But of course the final profit will be different for two reasons. First of all, there could be other bits of income. I've given two examples here. An obvious one is we may have received interest. If we've got money in the bank and we receive interest, we've made a bit more profit on top of what we're making from selling our goods. Um, maybe we've got some rent received. Maybe we own our building and there's some spare offices and we rent them out and earn some money. So if there is any other income for any reason then we add it on and the profit here has gone up to 81. More importantly though in order to earn that profit we've had various expenses. In our example I think it was electricity we had to pay but any expenses are going to reduce the final profit. Now there can be any number of items, these are just one or two examples, we'll see a lot more later, but maybe we have to pay rent. If we do, less profit. Uh, electricity, telephone, wages, salaries, motor expenses, the fuel, the repairs, the insurance, well any expenses of running the business we simply list them. Here, the total of these is 31,000. Deduct it, giving us a final profit of 50,000. And that final profit is called the net profit. So there's the pretty layout. But you'll get very used to it as we go through the um, chapters and do more and more examples. OK, right, we'll pause there, that was just layout, but there's one more bit to this chapter. So again, if you need, look back slowly at the layout, read the bits of terminology and check you're happy with them. Um, otherwise, start the third bit.